we're going to start with fundamental thing, which is raw conversion. Even though maybe at the beginning you don't see so many things in common between raw conversion and agenium burning, but during this lesson, I'm going to explain you how huge impact it's going to have for your future work and why raw conversion is so important for your dungeon and burning. Of course, if you are not familiarized with raw formats or with raw conversion, I'm going to put one lesson on the differences between file formats. However, it's not so important at the moment right now, and I believe most of you know what is raw format and what is raw conversion. So we're going to start with camera raw and I'm going to find the image through browsing bridge and just going to hit right and open this. It doesn't matter which file format you have. So even if you're working with different format, I recommend you this and you're going to see why. What you can see on this image, really beautiful portrait with beautiful model and also beautiful lights. However, for the future work, it is impossible to notice few parts of this image for our retouch. These areas over here are really dark, so it would be very difficult for us to work with this, to retouch some of these parts, etc. Because of this, I prefer to take down some of the shadows take down some of the blacks to make everything very clear and the 3D perspective and dynamic of the image I'm going to beat later with global dutch and burn. So I wouldn't be bothered about temperature and tint and anyway I like this on this image so except the small change I usually not changing so much uh, except the examples when it's really wrong. So what I'm doing here as I said I'm taking down some of the shadows. It's not such a big change, but so when I'm going around 50 and press P on my keyboard, you can see the difference. So that's the one thing I'm going to do in this basic panel, because it is basic panel by its name, which you can notice at the top is working with lights to make it comfortable for me. Also, except this, I'm going to take down some of the blacks, also quite much. As you can see, it's not destroying this image at all. It's actually looking a bit better. And the contrasts around, I'm going to build at the end. So it will be everything really clear and nice. I feel we pull up some of the whites too much. I'm going to take this down. And here, another very important thing that I have to tell you why I'm brightening up the shadows a little bit. So you already know this, it's easier for work. But why I'm not bothered about lights, why I'm not improving them. And the reason is simple, this is not the part where we're going to improve the lights. About this area, we're going to take care with our global dodging and burning when we will be improving our highlights, lights, and also shadows. Right now, the thing is everything has to be clear and the highlights cannot be seen so much. So they're not so strong, but I wouldn't even mind to take them down just a little bit. Um, but in this case, it was all right. Just by whitening all of this, I felt the highlights went up a little bit, but the highlights we're going to improve later. So the things I'm mostly bothered, look at the image to see what could be difficult and what you can make um, to make it easier for you to retouch. So very simple changes about contrast, I'm not doing so much, maybe just sometimes, but um, that's the basic step and this is something to which is, which is helpful for your retouch. Some people don't do this. If you are advanced, maybe you won't be doing this so much and you're going to notice when you're going to need this help, when you're not going to need this help. So you probably noticed already to see the preview, press P. So you can see everything was really dark, which would be very difficult for you to retouch. And that's after this few basic steps to brighten this image up a little bit. You can work of course with this 
tone curve. In this case, I'm not going to work. Um, if the image is too bright, you can sometimes take down some of the shadows. For example, if the background wouldn't be bright enough, for example, if, if the background wouldn't be dark enough, I'm sorry, and if the image would have really nice lights, probably I would take down some of the shadows over here. But in this case, it's not really necessary. So not just improve the shadows, of course, that's what I meant. About sharpening, sharpening is not something you take in care of in camera raw because it's going to just confuse your work and make your work difficult. Sharpening is something you're going to take care of later. And also what is really nice to take care of, except the basic steps. So as you can see, I'm using two panels, basic and this hue saturation luminance to take down maybe some orange colors which I don't have so many here, so maybe just a little bit. Uh, and this is the simple example of the image. And when the image is so simple on this one, you can just hit open image after you make sure that all your settings are right over here. As a color space, I'm using Profoto RGB, which is the biggest available space. And of course, I'm working with 16-bit channel. If you missed my other lessons and other courses, I'm also going to upload information about this. So everything here is all right. We can hit open image. And also in your settings is option open in Photoshop as smart objects. You can make this selected or just press shift and open this as an object. In this case, it wasn't really necessary, but I want to show you and maybe teach you some of the habit you're going to have in the future. Because when you open this as a smart object, you can double hit on this and open your camera roll settings once again and improve something. So that's very helpful than just okay. But after your work with raw conversion is done, you can just duplicate by Ctrl J and then Rasterize layer will be easier to work. That would be conversion. And all of this I would put into the group, Control Command G and call original. So that's the first step uh, you're going to do before we start dodging and burning and before we start working in Photoshop with our image. And in another lesson, I'm going to show you one more example, which will be a bit more complicated. And I'm going to show you how to fix few more things in camera.